I ain't knowingly commingle funds. It's a perfect competitive good to centralize stable coins. The FOMC raised our policy interest rate by 75 basis points. This is the first step in Ethereum's big journey. 2022 has been unlike any other year in crypto history. Here's a look back at the most epic stories that defined this year. The Terra network and its leader Do Kwon rose to the highest tier of the crypto world for doing what seemed like the improbable, building a fully decentralized stablecoin. Big shot investors poured millions of dollars into Kwon's project and so did thousands of everyday investors. He was even named as one of Coindesk's most influential figures in 2021. It's a perfect, com uh, perfect alternative, perfect competitive good to centralized stablecoins. But there were cracks in what he described as a perfect system. If a major crisis came along, could that, that could potentially destabilize those assumptions. That, does that make Terra Luna vulnerable? Well, I mean, the same argument could apply to any currency regime. And I think the decentralized economy, as codified by DeFi and various different blockchains, have, uh, you know, deserve to have their own sovereign decentralized currency. By May of 2022, it all fell apart. On May 7, the price of the then $18 billion algorithmic stablecoin Terra USD, which is supposed to maintain a $1 peg, started to wobble and fell to $0.35 cents on May 9. Its companion token Luna, which was meant to stabilize USD's price, plunged from $80 to a few cents by May 12. Uh, I would note that there was a report just this morning um, in the Wall Street Journal that a stable coin known as Te Terra USD um, experienced a run and had declined in value. I, I think that simply illustrates that this is a rapidly growing uh, product and um, that there, there are risks to financial stability and we need a framework. Despite Quan's subsequent revival plans and a fork in the blockchain to create Luna 2.0, the attempt to save the once $60 billion ecosystem failed to bring it back from the dead. Thus began a severe crypto contagion. Crypto hedge fund 3 Arrows Capital, or 3AC, had about $200 million worth of Luna on its balance sheet when the price of the coin fell to near zero. With Luna's collapse, along with the general crypto market downturn, 3AC began scrambling to sell and meet margin calls. CryptoExchangeBlockchain.com faced a $270 million hit on loans to 3AC. Voyager Digital filed for bankruptcy after the hedge fund couldn't pay back the reportedly $670 million it had borrowed from the company. Coindesk's sister company Genesis was also hit with hundreds of millions of dollars in losses. In a more than 1,000-page court filing, Three Arrows co-founder Su Zhu attributed the fund's collapse to over-leveraged trades. Basically, large gambles made with the hope that the crypto market would rebound to the upside. Following the collapse of Terra and the implosion of 3AC, a swath of liquidity-strapped crypto lenders found that they could no longer meet withdrawal demands. By June, as tens of thousands of crypto enthusiasts traveled home from Austin, Texas, where Coindesk held its first in-person consensus festival since the start of the pandemic, crypto lender Celsius announced it was pausing withdrawals. In the day after, day or two after the Luna blow up, uh, Celsius actually announced themselves that they had pulled uh, half a billion dollars worth of user funds out of Anchor a day or two before the collapse. And that was really stunning to hear that you know a professional risk management team had even bothered to be playing with an obvious ponzi scheme like luna crypto winter was about to get longer both bitcoin and ether have slipped more than 60 percent since the beginning of the year even though the collapse of many crypto companies attributed to these chilly crypto prices there was one big additional factor taking hold Inflation. Today, 
the FOMC raised its policy interest rate by three quarters of a percentage point. By 75 basis points. By three quarters of a percentage point. By three quarters of a percentage point. By a half percentage point. For a decade high inflation coming out of quantitative easing and trillions of dollars of government spending during the coronavirus pandemic has been the focus of economic policies around the globe. The U.S. Fed's Federal Open Market Committee has raised interest rates at a rapid pace since March, from near zero levels to the current 4.25 percent. In the past, crypto idealists have touted Bitcoin as an inflation hedge. Yet, once inflation began soaring, Bitcoin's price seemed to fall instead of rise. That's because as the U.S. Federal Reserve Bank began raising rates to fight inflation, investors began selling riskier assets like stocks and cryptocurrencies. As a bear market sweeps across the crypto industry, some of the biggest players have had to curb their growth ambitions. Crypto.com has discreetly let go of hundreds of employees. Gemini is laying off about 10% of its workforce. DCG, the parent company of Coindesk, laid off approximately 12% of its staff or 13% of its staff. Coinbase extending their hiring pause. BitMEX has cut off reportedly 30% of jobs. Galaxy Digital laid off about 20% of its staff. By December, more than 26,000 crypto industry jobs had been lost. This also comes amid broader cutthroat tech layoffs from the likes of Amazon, Meta, Twitter, and Robinhood. Many in the industry say bear markets are for building. That's why investors saw a glimmer of hope this year when one of the most highly anticipated technological upgrades took place. This is the first step in Ethereum's big journey toward being a, a, a very mature system. In September, an event known as the Merge swapped Ethereum's old proof-of-work model for a proof-of-stake model, ending the network's reliance on the energy-intensive process of cryptocurrency mining. The reduction of the carbon footprint is, is definitely a major draw um, for the change over to proof of stake. But on top of that, if you talk to Ethereum developers, they'll say that proof of stake also makes the network more decentralized because now there's like a less barrier for to entry with proof of work. You needed to invest in like hardware and um, like data centers basically to run the mining process. Um, and so now with proof of stake, you'll be able to just run a validator and stake 32 ETH. And even if you don't have 32 ETH, you can join a staking pool. Now proof of work advocates will say, actually, it makes it more centralized because, um, you know, not everyone has 32 ETH lying around. It's about $50,000 right currently. And so um, that and on top of that the more if you have staked the more likely you will be chosen to validate a block so the financial rewards will go to those who have more ETH staked but in november the demise of what was once a 40 billion dollar crypto empire shocked the world with its speed and scale the stunning collapse of cryptocurrency giant ftx ftx founder sam bankman freed sam bankman freed sam bankman freed founder of ftx accused of defrauding investors of billions on November 2nd, a Coindesk report of Sam Bankman Freed's market making firm Alameda Research showed the blurry lines of the two separate entities. In a partial balance sheet obtained by Coindesk's Ian Allison, two fifths of Alameda's $14.6 billion were held in the exchange's own token, FTT. Just, just tell us, like, did you, did you expect? I mean, did you realize how much of a, of a bombshell story you, you were sitting on? Did you anticipate this kind of fallout? I'm just doing my job. I really uh, don't yeah. it's not my intention to hurt, hurt anyone, uh, Sam, or indeed any of his customers. So, you know, just, but yeah, we, we, I was quite astonished. Following the explosive report, the then fifth largest crypto exchange fell like a house of cards. When the CEO of rival exchange Binance dumped 23 million FTT tokens, sending its price into freefall. Twisting the knife, Chang Peng Zhao announced a tentative deal to buy FTX, then abandoned it after saying he found too many holes in the company's finances. By November 11, SBF stepped down and the Bahamas-based exchange filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protections. Veteran turnaround expert John J. Ray III took over as FTX CEO. The FTX group's collapse appears to stem from absolute concentration of control in the hands of a small group of grossly inexperienced and unsophisticated individuals who failed to implement virtually any of the systems or controls that are necessary for a company entrusted with other people's money or assets. On December 12th, Bankman Fried was arrested by Bahamian authorities. He was taken into custody from his Nassau penthouse, 
where he had been on a month-long media apology tour. I ain't knowingly commingle funds. I don't know of FTX deposits being used to pay off Alameda creditors. I made a series of mistakes that seem the kind of mistakes that I would have considered myself to have been above. I had a duty. I had a duty to all of our stakeholders, to our customers. I sh really should have spent some time each day taking a step back and saying, what are the most important things here? By December 13, U.S. prosecutors charged him with eight counts of fraud and conspiracy. He had since been extradited to the U.S. and released on a $250 million bail secured by his parents while awaiting for trial in early 2023. FTX, along with many other crypto companies, are now in a drawn-out and complicated bankruptcy proceedings, revealing the real winners of this unprecedented year in crypto. Bankruptcy lawyers. So we saw their main law firm, uh, Sullivan and Cromwell, they charge uh, upwards of uh, $2,000 per hour. Insolvent crypto lender Celsius Network is currently undergoing bankruptcy proceedings. I mean, what are the chances of Celsius coming back and continuing to operate in some form after these proceedings? You know, as someone who's gotten closer and closer to the cu customers in this case, I would say the consumer business is dead. Another crypto lender, BlockFi, which had relied on FTX to stay afloat over the summer, was the latest company to join the bankruptcy parade. Even if BlockFi comes back, I imagine that just this idea of trust in general for crypto lenders is probably at a, you know, if not an all-time low, you know, near rock bottom. Other bankruptcies included Core Scientific, Voyager Digital, Three Arrows Capital, Babel Finance, Holdenauts, CoinFlex, and Vold. That's 2022 in review. You can find more of our complete coverage on Coindesk.com.